Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. Suppose you, you are a developer. You are developing an application. So what are the steps you would be following? Suppose you are developing an application at JWE, you will be developing an application in your Eclipse. And then you will be packaging the application. Then you upload that application to Amazon EC2 instance. You will be launching an instance. You will be creating a re, uh, security group. The, you would be also then creating the keys files and then upload the data over there. Then you will be set up the logging file over there. You will be set up the environment. Then you will be creating the AMI. You will set up the auto scaling. You will also set up the load balancer and uh, auto scaling triggers and everything. You will be setting up over there. Then you will be accessing the application using the ELB. Now what happens if the middle four tasks is being taken care by Amazon automatically. Wouldn't that be a nicer way because in this scenario you need to focus only on the development everything else would be taken care by the Amazon. So Amazon Elastic Beanstalk does that. Amazon Elastic Beanstalk is an official pass platform from Amazon. Now why do I say official because as I keep on speaking before also or talking before that there are some other platforms which also, there are other services also, which may qualify as a pass, but Amazon does not qualify, or does not say that this is a pass. This is the only service where Amazon publicly acknowledges that this is our pass offering. <coughs> so, Elastic Beanstalk is a pass offering from Amazon, and if you have used the Google App Engine, this is the similar concept. Google App Engine does also similar scenario like the Elastic Beanstalk. Now why this is Elastic Beanstalk? It's a very easy and quick deployment of the applications. It will automatically handle all the deployment details. It's a very highly reliable and scalable service and cost effective. It can be extended to support multiple development stacks. So it does not support only JWE. It supports the Java, .NET, PHP, Ruby, Node.js, uh, now it supports the Docker also, so Python, so it supports most of the PHP, so most of the programming language it supports that. So it's a past developer for the Java, .NET, Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby stack. You just create your application using your ID, it can be Eclipse, Visual Studio. You just package, you package your application and deploy over that. Everything, the server creation, environment creation, the auto scaling creation, ELB, everything would be taken care of by the Elastic Beanstalk. Yes, you can configure that. If required, you want to configure that, okay, I want to say that Elastic Load Balancer should be checking health this way, auto scaling should be triggering only based on the CPU 50% up. You can configure that also, else it will be doing everything on that own. And it will provide you a URL through which you can access the application also. So, one more advantage here is, you get the complete full control of Amazon resources. So if it launches an EC2 instance, you can log into that EC2 instance as a root and like what you log into normal EC2 instance, you can do that and configure something over there. So you'll have a root access over there. You can also configure your ELV auto scaling as per that. But the biggest advantage is everything is from one place. So you configure it once and everything would be done by the Elastic Beanstalk. And added advantage is it takes the it will create automatically AMI of your application. It will keep managing the versions also. So for example, you create a version, you create an application and you deploy it on Elastic Beanstalk. Now after one month, you fix certain bugs and you deployed that WAR file again to Elastic Beanstalk. So it will start launching that new version and create the, keep the copy of the older version. Now after you move to the production and you find that, okay, no, no, there is something wrong. It's not working as expected. You can always roll back to the previous version very easily. By just a few clicks, it will be able to roll back to the previous version. So that's the advantage over here. You can, in the same EC2 instance, you can install multiple applications also. Since you have the root access, you can do more configuration also here. Also, if you don't want to use the Elastic Beanstalk, you can always move it out. And you launch your own EC2 instance and manage that. So it's a very easy to use automated scalability, load balancing, you could give you the complete control, flexible. Biggest advantage, it's free of the cost. It would not charge you anything for the management part. Yes, if it launches or ELB, it launches EC2. All that service would cost you, but as a management part, it does not cost you. 
So elastic bin stock is a free of the cost. And why should you use the e elastic bin stock comparing your own AMI and own management? See, the best part is it's an automated provisioning of your environment, automated version management, manage environment in optimal settings it will be doing over there. It will also keep generating the log file and keep storing it the S3. Also it will provide you the troubleshooting if required. So these are the advantage of the using elastic bin stock. So Shenmugan has a question. Can we use it for the configuration management or for, for of our applications repository or deliverables? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you are asking here. See when you create Elastic Binstock, it will definitely create an instance. It will deploy the application because you just need to give your package application. Now everything will be taken care by Elastic Binstock. Now what do you mean by the configuration management? Can you just manage? You just want to say, okay, I want to set up. I need this instance or something. Oh, for my source code management. If you just want to manage the source code, then why do you go to the Elastic Binstock? Why don't you go to the S3 and store the source code there directly? it would be easier. Right? In the Elastic Binstock always launches the instance and does that for you because it will need some package application. If you just want to manage the source code, directly go to the S3, enable the versioning and keep uploading the version. Right? So that will be perfectly for you. Now how does the ELB under the hood normally work? So not the ELB, Elastic Binstock, sorry. So Elastic Binstock would have a host manager. Now it will be launching an EC2 instances, launching the Elastic Load Balancer, configuring the auto scaling and whenever you deploy an application, it would be keep on generating a version for this and storing inside the S3 for those versions as well as all the log files will be stored inside the S3. So if you see under the hood, normally what would happen, Elastic Binstock would always have a, a host manager. Now suppose if it's a Java, it will always have a Amazon Linux AMI. On top of that, it will be having a Tomcat installed as part of it. So when you deploy an application, that application would automatically be deployed as part of the Tomcat. It will be long, each EC2 instance would have the Tomcat Apache as part of this. Now, as per the requirement, it will keep launching the EC2 instances, which will be part of this elastic load balancer and the auto scaling. Also, it will give you the URL, so whenever you want to access that application you will be able to using that this URL also and this elastic binstock host manager so whenever you install a new version it will keep generating a new version automatically inside the S3 also so how do you work with the elastic binstock you can use the management console from the, your toolkit directly with the Eclipse Visual Studio they are having the plugins for this so you can directly de deploy from Eclipse or Visual Studio to the elastic binstock you can work from the command line tools or SDKs or APIs. So let's see the demo of the Elastic Binstock. So I'll just delete the previous one. So in the deployment and management, I'll go to the Elastic Binstock. So this is my console you can see for the Elastic Binstock. Now here when you are launching you need to select a platform. These are the platforms supported by Elastic Binstock, Docker, IIS, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Tomcat. We'll just go with the Tomcat as of now. I can directly go and say launch now. This is shortest or I can say create a new application where I can configure everything. I'll just say launch now. So it would start creating the environment immediately for me. So it will take a while to create this environment. I'll give it a minute. So it's a configuring, it will be creating the stack, everything for me. I can go to the configuration quickly. It is still creating all the configuration. Now, 
when you see the configuration I can also see this this is my scaling configuration so for load balancer and auto scaling this is my instance configuration this is my notification configuration and I can manage everything this is being still managed but if I just go here I can always say which kind of environment do I want? do I need load balancing and auto scaling or just I need a single instance I'll go with the load balancing and auto scaling now for the auto scaling what is my minimum instance what is my maximum instance which zones does it support so I'll say all the zones what is the cooldown period same way for the ELB I can say whether the trigger would be or sorry auto scaling whether trigger would be on network out or CPU utilization I'll say CPU utilization when CPU utilization is more than 75 percent sorry it's a period so for 20 minutes sorry for 5 minutes of one period and total 5 periods when threshold is 75 percent it will increment by 1 and when threshold is 10 percent it will decrement by minus 1 so this is how I have defined here currently I cannot modify because it's still being configuring the stack but I just want to show it how you can configure this also when I go back to configurations so if I want to specify the instances I can go there and say no no I don't want t1.micro I want the large and all that scenario I don't want the EC this is my EC2 keeper which I should be using this is my instance profile this is my that is for the role part this is my monitoring cloud watch basic or retail if I want to specify certain AMI I can do that so all these parameters I can configure also if I want to enable the notification for this software configuration if I want to say for Tomcat I want to specify the heap size everything I can do that for the version if I want to say this loading versions I can enable this the network tier this is my load balancing configuration so I can specify what is my listener port protocol everything I can configure here when should the health check be performed so the connection drainage, the session timeout over the cookie period if I enable the sticky session it will be done here so this is all everything here now after all this I go to the logs it will still it's being created it will keep on generating the log and stored in the S3 for the monitoring part currently it doesn't have a data once it started it will have some data available same way for the alarm events and text so let's go back to the dashboard and see if it's available it has gone through this it has launched an easy to instance for me added to this auto scaling group it has created a cloudwatch alarm also once it is created we will deploy an application here okay so it's been deployed now I'll oh, it's a created stack now I'll deploy my application so I'll say upload and deploy I have this my var file this is a tomcat default var file which I get it I just deploy it so what it will do is to deploy and you can also go to different versions it will show all the versions also created if it has it's still deploying this is the first version only default environment now once it's created we can access it using this URL
We'll just wait. It's just setting up still. Okay, so it's deployed. Now I'll be able to access this. So you can see this. It will show me this JSP and sublets. I can go to JSP examples, just an example. I'll be able to see this JSPs. So it will show me this JSP part. So now you can see how easy it is to manage. Same way I can go to the sublet examples. So it's so easy. You just upload your var file and it will be able to manage everything on behalf of you. Right? Any doubts or questions? Okay, I'm terminating it now. I would request everyone remember whenever you are doing practicals, you should also keep terminating the resources else it may cost you sometimes without your knowledge. Generally if it's part of the free tier it may not, but you should be careful here. 